Hi everyone, today I wanted to share how I beat my dad at chess blindfolded. So about a month ago, I was in Rome with dad and our Airbnb was a bit far from the city center. And on one metro trip, we decided to play a game. But I would play blindfolded, or I played blindfolded. Dad used this small travel chess set that I had that I was using to record these videos in front of famous landmarks. This is the Trevi Fountain. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the description if you haven't seen it. So Dad played on this, and I sat beside him and spoke my moves. And Dad also spoke his moves to me, obviously. Now, I did write down the moves on this notepad. Spoiler alert, it goes for 21 moves. And technically, you shouldn't write them down, but I figured it was good to have a list in case I, got, in case I forgot a move and we didn't have to restart. But I don't think I looked at the moves apart from writing them down because it was a short game. Um, and this is a photo Dad took uh, where I don't look too happy, but it was a pretty hot, hectic day in Rome as usual, as anyone who's been to Rome in summer knows. But it was pretty cool because we finished the game just before we arrived at the Colosseum. And the position on the board here is the final position. So after I show you the game, I can zoom in and we can see what happened. Um, but I realized that there are actually two answers to the question, how I beat my dad at chess blindfolded. One is the game itself, how I won the game, but two, or the other option is, the other answer, is how I got to the level of being able to play at least a short game blindfolded. And so I thought I'd quickly show what I've been doing the last couple of years in terms of study. Um, and I divided this pie chart into about, into five equal sections roughly speaking, and I'd say on average I've studied about two hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on if I'm working or whatnot, and I'd say about 20% I study openings, it's either YouTube videos going through main lines or different computer lines and just memorizing them and trying to understand the ideas. Another 20% would be puzzles or tactics, so serious puzzle solving where I set the position up on a board and try and solve it, sometimes taking 15 minutes if I have to, and yeah, really trying to calculate as much as possible. Number three, another 20% would be strategy or master games, I just combine these two, so either looking at um, video lessons on strategy or studying Grandmaster games with books or sometimes videos as well, just to get a um, improve my idea of general strategy and middle games, etc. Uh, another twenty percent watching masters play. So I watch a lot of Grandmasters or international masters on YouTube while they play Blitz and they explain their thought process, and I really think it's helped a lot in terms of being able to understand why they play moves and how they play different positions, when they're better, when they're worse, when it's complicated. Uh, I think it helps a lot. And lastly, games or classes. So training games or tournament games, and also classes once or twice a week. If you uh, join a club, a bigger, a bigger chess club, usually they have classes on, depending on your level. So I also have gone to classes at least once or twice a week. So that's a, that's basically how I got to the level I am now, which is about 1850 fee day. I've been as high as 1900, um, but I've had some tough results recently. But anyway, now let's get to the game. So I was playing black, which is a bit funny because usually the simul giver or the blindfold, the person who's blindfold plays white to make it a little bit easier, but I don't, doesn't really matter at my level at least. And dad, I should mention, is a beginner, so he knows how to play, but he never really studied chess in general. Um, okay, so dad plays e4. Actually, I will mention. No, actually, I won't mention. I was going to show you the graph at the bottom, but I'll save that to the end. I play the Scandinavian. Um, he declines to declines the pawn. Usually white takes this pawn and we enter the main line. But here it's uh, Black Mardima Gambit, transposition. Dad plays normal moves so far. And here 
this isn't the best move, knight b5. He's obviously has the idea of taking on c7, but white should just focus on developing or maybe gambiting the pawn to fast track development. And because this move, I can easily parry with knight a6, which I play, and that takes the pawn. So a mistake early on. I think he just forgot that the knight defends c7. Don't forget we were playing in a busy metro, loud, and yeah, a bit difficult to con concentrate. But I was obviously happy to win a piece so early on. But it's still tricky for me to remember the position and to convert. So I did my best here to try and win quickly. So bishop b5, I played knight d7, develops, a6, bishop a4, b5, bishop b3. And now bishop d6, eyeing this pawn here, so he can't castle. Well, if he castles, I would take with check and win another pawn. Knight c3, and now I take anyway. And it was sort of a trap, because I was hoping he would play g3, attempting to trap my bishop. And he did, but that meant that I got a really strong attack. So g3, I sacrificed the piece to get in with the queen, and it's very difficult now for white to escape. Here I play e3. I forgot to mention, actually, that, yeah, I played quite well, but at the end I did miss some mate in ones. So it wasn't perfect game. Seems like I played quite well, but here I have checkmate in one with queen f2 check. But I had already calculated after e3 that I'd probably win. I can't remember what I was planning to do after queen c1. But anyway, after king e2, after king e, king c1, I wanted to say, I meant to say. But after king e2, queen f2 is checkmate. But I missed because I had already calculated that I win the queen. So, one of those cases of forgetting to look for a better move. So I had made in one, but I saw that I could win the queen, which I do. Queen f3 here, here, and checkmate. But I did miss... I think I missed checkmate before. I had made in one here. Ah oh, no, this wasn't made in one. Yeah, the knight covers f2. And yeah, here there's a few checkmates. I can promote with checkmate, but I played queen f1, checkmate. And it was actually quite a clean game, even though I missed made in one. Ah oh, yeah, I did miss... Yeah, for some reason I thought I missed checkmate... Yeah, I did, okay. I had made in one here. And here, yeah, when I took the queen, sorry. Here I also have checkmate in one. So I missed mate in one twice. But okay. Um, I still won the game and played quite well. And yeah, looking at the final position, as you can see. Uh, queen f Queen's on f1. Checkmate. So yeah, hopefully that was interesting. And maybe it can inspire you to study hard or harder to be able to reach a level where you can start to play blindfolded because it's really cool. Basically it's just a natural progression of staring at the chessboard so much, solving puzzles and calculating that it just gets fixed in your brain and especially the starting position and openings are very easy to do blindfolded. But uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and follow my journey as I progress and hopefully get stronger. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.